Hello everyone, welcome to my series of Pixie.js tutorials and today we're going to continue on with uh, the use of tiling sprites to create this interesting parallax scrolling background. Uh, and the parallax scrolling effect really is basically, uh, so it's a multiple layered effect here where the frontmost layer moves faster than say the middle one here and then the back one moves even slower. Okay, so this kind of gives you the, the illusion of depth. And so we're going to basically use tiling sprites in Pixie to create this effect. All right, so let's go and dive in. All right, and for this uh, tutorial, uh, I found this uh, series of uh, parallax images from uh, a uh, user named um, Antimas. And uh, it's basically, he gives us away for free, which is awesome. And so you can go ahead and download this yourself if you want to go uh, use that. Or if you have other graphics you want to use, you're more than welcome to. Now, he's got multiple layers on here. I'm only using three of them. And so, uh, you know, we'll dive in and load those up and uh, we'll begin working right away. So what we're going to use is the... Uh, base project that I've been using all along for all my tutorials and if you once again if you've not uh, look, looked at those go ahead and use that but basically a simple 800 by 600 uh, pixie application uh, attached to my game div in the body that's all there is to it okay and so let's uh, go on and start putting our stuff in place okay first we'll basically uh, make sure that uh, we'll go live with my live server and right here so that's all we have the gray background nothing really impressive to look at now I threw all the graphics into an assets folder uh, forest pack and I'm gonna be using the the series images here for like the the back the front and then the middle here alright so then I'm gonna basically use the app loader to load them all in so right after I attach the so right here, I'm going to also get rid of the game loop part of it. Well, actually, I'll add that. I'll move that a little bit later. So first things first is we'll add the app loader. So app loader dot, I'm going to set the base URL uh, equal to the assets folder, because that's where my stuff is at, assets folder. All right, and then we'll do app dot loader. And then I'm going to basically add each item in. So, whoops, app dot loader. And, and it's down here add and we'll start with the background first we'll call this bg back all right and then uh since i already since assets is already here but it's another folder called uh forest pack so we'll have the path the rest of the way to there forest pack forest underscore pack and what it's trees dash back dot png okay then we'll just copy this a couple of times. So uh, get the other ones in here. All right. So we'll do the middle level next. Let's call that middle, and it's gonna be batteries dash middle. And then the last one we'll just use front, and it's gonna be trees dash front png. Okay. So now that's that's in place. Now we can basically do an app dot loader dot load and uh, as we shorthand uh, I can uh, the function for load I can actually pass in a function for for on complete but I can do it this way or I can just do an app dot loader dot uh, on complete dot add and I can do my uh, init level function so uh, so we're gonna create a function that basically initializes the uh, the level after everything is loaded okay and in with this that in mind we can't have the, the game loop running uh, right here because it's gonna basically go through do the preloader start loading and then unfortunately this is gonna cause the game to go right away and that's not what we want we want it to, to run after everything has been set up to go so we're gonna take that out of here and let's make a stub down here for my init level function all right and I'll just put that in here paste that back in here and we'll use that later okay so uh, now before we dive in let's add some variables to hold our uh, sprites okay so we'll we'll do uh, let BG back all right, let BG middle let BG front and let uh, let's see BG let's see BG X equals zero for initial location for the background and then let BG speed and this is gonna be how fast our um, 
our, our Italian sprites will be moving across the screen. Okay, so that's what we're going to use for that. Okay, so now let's go talk about the, the init level here. Okay, so what are we going to do once it's done, right? Once it's completed, uh, loading the sprites, now we need to start doing stuff. Okay, so um, since we're going to be repeatedly using uh, a create function to create our tiling sprite, I'm going to make a function to store that. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to go down here and create a function for that called function create bg. All right. And we'll take the texture that we'll use for it. Okay. So we create our tiling sprite. So tiling, create tiling equals new pixie dot tiling sprite. And we'll use that texture and we'll just give it a size 800 by 600, which is the size of my stage. Okay. And then set so the initial positioning, tiling dot position dot set, we'll do 0 dot .0, 0, 0 comma 0. All right, so that's going to set it up there. And then we're going to add it to the stage, right? App dot stage dot add child uh, and tiling. So now it's going to add it to the stage and then we'll return it. All right. So that, um, you know, we're going to call the create function. It's going to create a tiling sprite, set the position for it, add it to the stage, and then return it back to the calling. So the function so we can store it. Okay. Okay, so now let's go to the init level here. And so we're now we're going to basically uh, assign our, you know, we'll call our functions and assign it to each of those variables. So I'll start with the, so the load order does kind of matter. So it's sort of like, um, you know, we'll, we'll, it'll, the bottom one, the bottom layer is called first, and then everything else uh, for creation is kind of stacked on top. So we'll start with the background first. So PG back equals create BG. All right, and I'm going to use with well, the preloader stuff. So app dot loader. All right, loader dot resources, and we're going to pass in the uh, let's see BG back first. It's texture. Okay, so then well that well, that'll create our call our function. Use the texture uh, to create it on the screen, and then give give it return it to this BG back. And we'll do the same thing for the middle and front. Okay, so the order does matter, so you gotta be good, pay attention to that. So we're gonna go from lowest to highest. So middle and then front for this one here. All right, I'm gonna go so BG middle. And this one here, BG front. Okay. So then um, lastly, we have the on loop. And we'll put some stuff in here. Let's see what we get, though. Let's just go and take a look at the browser and see what we get. All right. So voila. So just from, from the initial get-go, we have three tiling sprites. They'll, they don't look like they're tiling because, well, I set them to 800 by 600, so they take the full screen. Okay. So um, they don't look very impressive right now. So now next thing we got to do is we got to start moving them. Uh, so how are we going to do that? And the game loop, go back here, we will... Uh, we'll call a function that will run every time the game loop runs, roughly about 60 times a second. Uh, so we'll call a update bg. So we'll just do that. And now we'll create a function down here for updating it. Function update bg. All right, so what's going to happen here? So we're going to basically bgx, which we assigned as the set of zero, right? We're going to move it. So it's a bgx plus bg speed. Okay, all right, so then what we're going to do is do a bg front dot tile position dot x equals bgx. Okay, and then bg middle dot tile position dot x equals bgx. And then we're going to slow it down a bit. All right, we're going to divide that by two, and then bg back dot tile position dot x equals bg x divided by four. So we'll make that even slower. Okay. So it's basically gonna run through this each time and then basically assign the, the tile position x and because it's a tiling sprite, it should wrap around. Okay, so let's go take a look and save that and see what happens. 
All right, there we go. So now we see we have that little inter interesting tiling operation. And it's important, this is where your tiling sprites kind of come in handy. If you don't, if there are any gaps between the edges, you'll, you'll see them if you don't do them right. But you know, if they're blended in nicely, they're going to tile across as we move. So let's do something interesting. Let's actually change, um, let's put some interactivity to this tiling, tiling is a sprite here because it's kind of boring. All right? And in a game, you might want to actually have some other um, you know, other things happen, right? So let's do this. Let's go and uh, go back up to the top here and with the init level here, let's add a little bit of interactivity. Let's go and use a document dot add event listener. All right. And we'll do a key up. All right. So, and then we'll call a function called uh, switch dir. Okay. All right. So, What's that going to do is uh, it's going to change the direction. This we can change the direction, or maybe even the speed. Let's do that. So down here we have another function called function switch dir pass an e. Now now this is the funny thing. You know the JavaScript will give you the an an event all right, that comes into the function automatically. All right, so you don't have to you don't have to pass it in here. This is kind of given. All right. And now we can interrogate that event. And we're going to look for the key code since we're using the key up uh, event. So I'm going to do a switch. And we're going to say e.keycode. All right. And we're going to look for certain key codes. All right. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with what the key codes can do, you can always just, before doing all this stuff, you can do a console.log e.keycode. All right, and you'll see what keys there are. So if I run this and as go back to here, and I bring up the console, the Control Shift I, uh, you see that if I hit, like, say, the left arrow is 37, 39 is the right arrow, okay, and let's say space bar is 32. Right, so those are the key codes, and we'll actually use those for our little uh, little uh, interactivity thing here. So all right, so we know that 37 is left arrow. So we can say case. 37, all right, we're going to basically do, it's going to be a left arrow. All right, and so what are we going to do here? Let's just do a BG speed equals BG speed minus one. So we'll actually um, subtract from the speed. Now with the case statement, you got to you have to do a break. If you don't do a break, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bleed into the next one. And so we're going to say the right arrow is number 39. All right, so we'll do a right arrow. We'll do a BG speed equals BG speed plus one. And we'll break that. And lastly, let's do a space bar, which is 30, 32. And oops, how stupid uh, IntelliSense can be kind of annoying sometimes. And let's we'll say BG speed equals zero. We'll just stop it. Okay, just like that. Okay, so just with that bit of interactivity, what happens? Let's take a look see now. So now with that, if I run this and I use the right arrow, I've increased the speed. So hitting, keep constantly hitting the right arrow, and I got to go pretty quick. Hit spacebar, stop. Now I hit the left arrow, it goes the other direction. Or slow it down, and now I go the direction. So you can see how you can use the, 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 the parallax scrolling to kind of your advantage to kind of, you can imagine like a game that would do this. A lot of infinite runners will use this kind of parallax scrolling. Uh, Mario games kind of did this type of thing as well. It just adds a bit of flair. You don't have to do it, but it's nice to, it gives a little bit something interesting visually to your game. Okay, so there you go. So a simple bit of interactivity to go along with it. Now, just a note, I actually used the DOM event listener. I didn't worry, I didn't have to think about using a pixie event because well, we're gonna remember, uh, this is all within the web page. all right? You don't have to limit yourself to only what's inside the pixie canvas because uh, pixie lives inside the, the DOM. So uh, that is something easily, um, you know, you can just do. All right, so that's it for tiling sprites, parallax scrolling. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll do my best to answer that. And if you have not subscribed, please do. All right, thanks for watching.